welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast, the weekly show for nomads, work campers, RVers, and entrepreneurs looking to earn a living or build a business while enjoying the RV lifestyle. This week's host is Heath Paget. Let's settle in and enjoy the RV Entrepreneur Podcast brought to you by RV Life. Hey, this is Heath Paget, and welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, I'm talking with my friend Dave from KarmaCampers.com. We cover a lot in this episode, everything from how Dave grew his camper van rental business from zero to over 60 vans, how he thinks about creating an experience as a brand, working with influencers, and how to get the most out of those relationships on both sides of the coin, and a lot more. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's go. Dave, what's up? Thanks for coming on the podcast. Hello, Heath. Thanks for the invite. I'm so stoked to be doing this and so stoked to be seeing you again and chatting with you. It's been so, so long. I can't believe it's been that long. The uh, fun fact intro aside from Dave's business bio and cool company that we're going to talk about is the last time that we were hung out, we just talked about this before jumping on, was we were in Calgary going to Banff and we went to like a brewery and stuff and we were hanging out with you and Alyssa wasn't feeling good that day. And we didn't know it at the time, but Alyssa was pregnant with our daughter, Ellie, who is now <laughs> almost four years old. So that's, oh it's been a long time since we talked. <laughs> it's been so long. And like so much has happened since then, not only just having kids and, and, you know, growing and selling businesses and stuff like that, but man, so much has happened. It's just been a whirlwind, but I'm, I'm thrilled for you too. Congratulations again on the, on the kids and the, the, everything that you guys have done. This is so cool. Chatting Thanks, man. I love your business a lot. And I'm excited to talk when you posted on LinkedIn Thanks. that you were interested in jumping on the podcast. I was like, dude, we got we to gotta catch up because I think at the time, Karma Camper Vans had... Do you know what your fleet was when we were there in 2018 fall? I think, yeah. So fall 2018, we had 10 vans. Like, and now you have... It was our first year. And now you have how many? Well, we've built 75. We currently have in our fleet 62. So like 6x management growth. That's pretty good, I'd say. So maybe before kind of getting into the weeds of karma, can you give us a little bit of how you got into, you know, the business that you're in now, which is running this sweet camper van rental company, taking people to the mountains and going to lots of cool places in Canada? Yeah. So first of all, our mission is to provide people with the opportunity to have remarkable life-changing experiences through using our camper vans. That is the whole reason we exist. Someone once told me, Dave, you're not building a company selling camper vans. You're building an experience company. And that person, they pointed to the mountains, they pointed to the national parks, and they said, that is what you're selling. You're not selling camper van rentals. And it couldn't be further from the truth. It's something that right from the get-go, I was like, First of all, this has to happen here. It was something that really hadn't happened in Calgary and area before. There, there really weren't many players other than the big RV rental companies, you know, like the big Class C rentals and, and motorhome rentals or trailer rentals. So when we were looking at doing this, it was a kind of a no brainer. Like we just thought this had to happen. And the way we were going to do it was with the converted camper van because of the, you know, gosh, the van life thing the conversions, the just like the artistic merit we putting our own stamp and, you know, our own look and feel into the vehicle that we, we knew people were going to use was liberating and was so much fun to do. So a bit of a ramble there. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good. I, when, you can when, tell I'm a little passionate about this. When so. somebody says, so when you were thinking about from the beginning and your buddy said, you know, think about this in terms of like, you're not selling a camper van company or a rental, you're selling an experience in the mountains and adventure. How do you use that to actually make decisions? Because when I go to your website and I look at the branding and all the photos you post on your Instagram, it is always someone in the mountains. You got the back of the rig open. I actually remember, this is a total side tangent, but when we were in Canada, we were coming back and you had a rig that needed transported back and our friends, Kara and Nate were coming up and I said, Hey, could we do some type of deal? And I remember... You know, just seeing their van parked in Banff National Park is October, Canadian Thanksgiving, and it just looks so picturesque. But that's yeah. basically what every, you know, kind of like photo that you have. So is that something you yeah. think about in terms of like your marketing positioning or like how do you think about that in terms of the business? Yeah. So first of all, when we were starting the social media account, one of our objectives was to always make sure the product was in the, the photo, right? Like we could have posted pictures of 
Banff and Lake Louise and Jasper and the BC Rockies and the coast all day, like landscapes type stuff. But we always knew that the product was going to be the thing that people saw as being different. So we had to make sure that that was in the photos. In terms of the branding, yeah, it was it was literally like, hey, this is what's available, like sharing. This is what's available for you. Here's how you get to it. We can help you do this. We also wanted to make it like super simple for people to rent with us. So the website was super clear and explained everything. Even the booking button. I remember talking to the web developer and being like, we want that widget, that booking widget, smack dab on the homepage as soon as you land it so that you could price out your trip, know exactly how much it's going to cost and what's included, and, and off you go. And then the other thing was working with awesome influencers like Karen Nate. So that, I mean, was a, just a golden ticket that fell into our laps. And thank you again for setting us up with them. I still need my second Karma Campers hat from that. Yeah. <laughs> I No, honestly, dude, I owe you guys so much for this. It was something that we always knew influencers were, were going to play a big part in our brand growth, but we didn't have that expectation. The results that Karen Nate brought to the table once they started posting their videos was just exponential. Like people going to book immediately, basically? Yeah, or... people booking immediately. Our social media following skyrocketed. Now, we had done some some legwork ahead of time. We made sure that there were awesome photos on the social media channels. We made sure we had our YouTube channel set up. We had our website all figured out and all that stuff. But once they started posting their videos, it was like this beautiful thing opened up where the exposure was there. Like we started getting the exposure of all these like travelers all over the world who followed Karen and Nate. And they're like our, our bread and butter, man. They are just like, oh, I just can't believe it happened. Honestly, I'm just so, <laughs> so stoked and grateful that that happened. The other thing that I, I thought was really cool that we did with Karen and Nate was we did a follow-up giveaway with them. Oh yeah, that's we, right. We reached out to their email database with a big giveaway, like a seven day trip. So we gave that away online on social media. And then Anyone who didn't win the giveaway then got a follow-up promo code to rent with us. And man, I'll, like I think we we rented uh, probably a hundred or more vehicles just because of that promo code. It was great. It was a good little wow. kickstart to our little company. That's awesome. And have you done intentional uh, influencer campaigns after the fact? Because I think that's something that is always on the list with people. It's like, okay, how am I going to think about collaborating or working with influencers? And it depends on every company. Like you can give away the product which you have costs for, but have you had campaigns that you've done after that that have worked pretty well? Yes. Yeah, so we've since then we've worked with a handful of influencers from like bigger influencers with hundreds of thousands of followers to smaller, maybe more like micro influencers with the tens of thousands of followers ish. Each have had their pros and cons. I would definitely suggest people really vet their influencer that they're working with. They want to make sure that obviously the target audience makes sense for you what you're giving them is a fair exchange in return. And also that the terms and conditions are really clearly set out. Nothing's worse than after the end of the campaign, them coming back to you for like a refund or you coming to them looking for more content and assets and no one wanting to give up any more than what they that they thought they were going to. So yeah, always having those terms and conditions figured out. And then little tip for everyone out there, the, the leverage. So I just said making it fair. I think as the provider, like as the product provider, you have more leverage to get more out of that content creator than you think. So here, here's a prime example, right? Someone messages me, says, Hey, Dave, we're coming to Canada. We're going to go travel Banff, Jasper Lake Louise for 10 days. I'm a photographer slash videographer. I would love to give you content in exchange for use of the van. Here I am thinking, yeah, that's great. That sounds awesome. But like, look, you really want to take this trip. You're just tacking on the fact that you're a good photographer and videographer to get something out of the deal, which is totally cool. I understand that. But first and foremost, you want to take this trip, right? Like you're probably mm -hmm. going to pay for this no matter what. So I always try and think of it that way in terms of that you as a product provider can probably get more out of the deal than what you're giving them just in terms of product offering. So that's my little tip there. And then also the follow-up thing. So if you do get an influencer to work with you, always have some sort of follow-up campaign or giveaway or to leverage their audience even more. Their audience, once that campaign is over, 
is super hungry. They've seen your content. They want to do that trip. They want to buy your thing. Throw them a bone, like give them a little discount code, do a little giveaway, maybe even get them to sign up to your email list in exchange for X, Y, Z. Those types of things work really well. I love that. That's super helpful. So going back to beginning of Karma. So you started with 10 vans right out of the gate. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, there's a lot of people like Alyssa and I have rented out our RV before on Outdoorsy. And that was cool. But it was just kind of a hobby experiment thing. So a lot of people might just want to spin up and say, hey, I'm going to do a, a van rental and I'll put a van up there that I bought or I own already and I'll subsidize it or I'll try to turn it into a business. What made you think like, let's go big and start with 10 vans versus kind of testing the waters or did you test the waters? We didn't test the waters. I mean, nowadays with our over 60 vehicles, you could think of 10 as kind of testing the waters. But no, we personally knew that this was going to be a going concern. It, it was going to validate itself. We did do 10 to mitigate our risk, but we knew that 10 was going to be a good number to really figure out our market, our branding, our business model, all that kind of stuff. Now, I think, I don't know if you, you knew this, but I think you knew this, right? Like we did use wheelbase as our backend system. So okay. thereby our vehicles were actually published on Outdoorsy too. Sure. And if anyone's yeah. listening who doesn't know what Wheelbase is, it's basically the backend software that runs a fleet rental business. And as exactly. part of that, it's a free software. The caveat is you have to distribute your inventory onto Outdoorsy site, which is a great mm -hmm. strategy. That's right. And the way that they get paid is actually when someone rents your vehicle on Outdoorsy, there's a commission fee attached to that that then goes right to Outdoorsy slash Wheelbase. So... You know, Wheelbase is, is great, great software, really easy to use. Outdoorsy, the connection there makes a lot of sense as a small time renter. You get the, you know, possibly the insurance coverage that you, you're going to need as a renter. The, the system itself is just great to use and just helps you manage everything from start to finish. That being said, there are some cons, like it doesn't actually give an independent RV rental company the type of independence that you might want from uh, the insurance side of things, or even just the processes. Like we came up with this automated model really early. This was pre COVID, like contactless automated pickup and drop off. Well, Outdoorsy doesn't really see that as being something that they want to integrate into their system. So yeah, there's some pros and cons for sure. That being said, 10 was a good number for us to start. I still had a full-time job. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I was still doing my my main gig, which was marketing and social media, those types of things up here in Canada. So really, I was operating Karma on the side, man. It was like, <laughs> I was taking bookings. I was cleaning the vans. I was flipping them. I was doing laundry out of my house. Yeah, it was intense. So how did you go about funding the purchase of 10 regs? Because I... I remember this slightly, we had a conversation, but it's been almost five years and I've had two kids since then. So a lot of it's fuzzy, <laughs> but you had a partner that was a van builder. And no. is, okay. Yeah. So my business partners, they own an RV dealership here in, in Calgary and they've owned it for a long, long time. We've known each other for 20 years and without getting into the huge backstory, we've known each other for a long time. I've actually worked for them and with them in the past in the RVing space. I worked at the dealership for a long time as a kid out of, out of university. So basically with their networks, their ties to material sourcing and product buying and component buying, between that and the power that them as a corporation had to purchase fleet vehicles, that really helped us get really great deals on vans, really great deals on all the components that go into the vans. And they also had a huge network of RV technicians, right? They had a huge you know, number of people working for them in their service department, but they also sublet it to independents and contractors, contract RV technicians. So we took full advantage of that. We hired a master motorhome technician to help build out our first van. They figured out the wiring, the, the setup. And you know, this was 2018. So, you know, not a lot of the really cool technology that's out there today was out back then. So making sure that everything was hooked up properly was key. And uh, yeah, that knowing those guys made it a whole lot easier. So did they actually buy the vans and they were kind of the investment and you were the operational side or? No, we financed the vans. Yeah. So we had an agreement with one of our local banks that we would fleet finance. It's called floor plan financing. So basically 
you as the company, you finance a, a portion of the build and the van purchase, and then the bank covers the rest of it. Hmm. And then you have like just basically a monthly payout to the banks. We all put in our, our own little seed capital. So we all have individual seed ownership of the company. And then everything else was bankrolled. That, uh, yeah, has basically continued to this day. Yeah. One thing that I think that's super interesting with the class B rental market is it seems like unlike the C's, which depreciate and just kind of go to the floor, it seems like vans to some extent, maybe you tell me if I'm wrong because you know this space, but they hold their value. So you can basically get a return in X amount of time and then still sell it at a decent profit. So the 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 you've sold so far, like has that kind of been the case? Well, we've sold 12 vans and that has definitely been the case. We've been so grateful that this market, this this economy right now, this van economy is just going bonkers. And it's a perfect storm. Unfortunately, it's a perfect storm. You know, Amazon's bought every van under the moon. Then, you know, then you have all the other delivery companies and restaurants and, you know, mail companies and, and couriers buying cargo vans as well. And the fact is the, the van that we use, the Ford Transit, which is a high roof extra long, so the extended version, was one of the most popular of that version. So here we are, you know, this tiny camper van rental company in Calgary going to Ford and saying, hey, we want to buy, you know, a couple of hundred vans. And they're saying, uh, well, actually, you're just going to get like 10% of that. So you try to buy more? Yeah, we've been trying to buy more all the time. And Unfortunately, the market is so crazy. The demand is so crazy, let alone the fact that the production line's been in absolute chaos since COVID just because of, you know, microchip issues and workforce issues and COVID and all this stuff. So it's just been the perfect storm of van demand and availability, which has kept the price for those vans really high. If you go to online looking for a used van right now, like the prices are going to be exorbitant because you can't get them. You can't mm. get vans right now. We're dealing with a couple of dealers locally and in the States, and they're saying the same things. They're like turning people at the door saying, don't come in because there's no vans available. Lately, we've been lucky enough to get our order in with Ford. The vans are coming. We're, we're pretty happy about that. But that in turn, plus the outfitting, you know, plus this camperizing has certainly created this interesting market where camper vans just really haven't lost their value right now. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you can basically, yeah, that's, that is pretty cool. Cause then you could just rent it for how many years and then sell it and sell it at a decent value. We can sell uh, them at a decent value and which is helping us, right? Because we need that sort of seed funding to then help build the next fleet of camper vans to help us grow. Yeah. Do you know how many uh, trips you guys did last year in total? I do. We did, what is it here? 1,058 total bookings last year. Wow. 8,500 rental days. So we probably saw over 2,000 people in our camper vans last year. Yeah, it's, man, it's crazy. So that compared to 2000, let's say 19, when we had 396 bookings. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Congrats. Aside from the logistical issues that everyone's had buying vans, what would you say has been kind of the biggest obstacle that you've had to navigate and figure out personally in this business, whether it's like figuring out things you haven't done before with you've got 12 employees now or 12 people on your team? And what has been the biggest challenge for you? Yeah, I'm kind of equating it to getting an MBA on the fly. So, you know, for all those MBAers out there, those all the you know, I, I give you huge kudos because there's so many aspects to running, not even a small business, but let's call it a medium sized business that I just didn't even think about. So things like human resources, hiring, firing, benefits, workers' compensation, you know, employee morale, culture, team building, the list goes on, like even to the point of like having your shop set up properly with the proper safety protocols, the proper equipment, the proper instructions on the walls, things like that. So that kind of stuff is super key. And it's something that not that I took lightly, I just didn't really know about it, right? No one was here handing me this guidebook that said, this is how you treat your team and help them flourish and grow. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge thing. The other thing was finances, man. Like one person I know really well, 
gave me a huge piece of advice right off the get go. And he said, make sure you have a rock star accountant or accounting team taking care of your books. You have maybe a bookkeeper, a controller, perhaps like a CFO type person on contract or like a fractional CFO, just to help you collect your numbers properly, record things properly, make sure you're, you know, you're paying the government properly, you're paying your team properly. That stuff goes a long way. We, we actually got caught. It was probably a year and a half ago now. We got caught switching accountants and the new accountants looking at our books and just like almost laughing at us because the books were in such mess. So mm. tracking of revenues, you know, expenses, deposits, can't prevent maintenance versus, you know, repairs and shop equipment and all this stuff, property, lease, just all that stuff put together. It, you know, it's super important for your business, keeping on top of those numbers, having your KPIs, having that dashboard for you to go to at the end of or the beginning of every day, knowing where you are and where you want to be is super important. And without a really good accounting team, that's going to be really tough. So those two things I learned on the fly <laughs> and, <laughs> and very fast uh, because I had to. Yeah. It's also pretty critical. I mean, if you're thinking about ever, I don't know what your intentions are for the company, but if you think about selling it, I mean, you're going to have to be on top of those books. Do you know like what would be a big win for you and, and with Karma, like to keep running it forever or to have an exit of sorts? Or You know, we just did our team goal setting for the year, Heath. And one of the things that I put on that was to continue to build a rock star team that's highly motivated, dedicated, and grateful, knowing they're changing our customers' lives. The whole plan is just to keep doing this, continue to build the company up. We want to make our little good company into a big, great company. Well, that's the whole goal. We want to mm. continue to do what we're doing. We've been watching the landscape. There's certainly a lot of similar businesses that have been popping up. And I'm just like, I'm so thrilled seeing what's happening out there. People are doing such a great job building their little camper van companies and whether it's for rentals or conversions or outfitting and all that stuff. I just think this community is so amazing and the people I'm meeting along the way are so awesome. And yeah, I don't, you know, where this is going to go in five to 10 years, I have an idea, but yeah, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. With all the camper van companies popping up and, you know, as you kind of grown, you, you mentioned that you're using world base and stuff like that. Are most of your bookings direct today versus on marketplaces? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's for sure by design and on purpose. We, you know, like I said, Outdoorsy was great at the beginning. It helped us get some exposure. I think even the first like handful of bookings were all through Outdoorsy. But over time, we always knew we wanted to be a standalone brand. We knew we wanted to be a going concern. I'm a branding guy, marketing guy through and through. So this is super important for me. We knew that having our individual brand at, you know, on the vans our own take on the design and the layout was going to be a huge differentiator for us. It just wouldn't be any other way. I, I just couldn't see it being any other way. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough to say, but that's yeah. the way it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, make, that makes, that makes total sense. Well, Dave, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, man. And uh, it's been fun to watch your business grow from afar. And hopefully next time we need to get back up to Canada because it's been a very long time, but I think border and everything that's all open now, right? Like we can it come is. up there. It's all open. Everyone's invited. <laughs> come, <laughs> come have some fun. And I think vice versa, maybe I need to jump in a van and come down and see you guys and, and do some, uh, some playing around down in, in your area. I think, you know, these vans and these vehicles are, are licensed to, to get out and explore and see more than we ever thought we would ever see before. Now's the time to do it. And and yeah, we're excited to see anyone come through Canada and Calgary and Vancouver to, to do that with one of our vans. Are any of your vans like we have a, can we put car seats in them We have for the two little ones? No, unfortunately, there's still just all two seaters. It's one of those things you talk about with the future of karma and potentially might be seeing something other than a two seater come down the laneway here through uh, through karma's doors in the near future. We'll see. I keep poking Mike Elias over at Leisure Travel Vans to have like, because he's got kiddos too, like some of our age. Yeah, and yeah. dude, you just need to have a van that's got, you know, a spots for a couple of car seats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at it. It's something that's definitely, we, it's high demand. Like we get asked all the time for that kind of stuff. So we'll yeah. see. You never know. So if anyone's listening to this and you happen to be in Calgary, want to go on a really cool trip into the mountains or 
anywhere else in the surrounding areas. And in Vancouver, of, we got a depot there too, right? A Vancouver, yeah, yeah. Done that trip multiple times. You have to make sure and stop and hit up Karma Camper Vans because they're amazing. And you can say, hey, today for me. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast, man. Thanks, Eve. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of The RV Entrepreneur. If you enjoyed it, I would love to hear from you in iTunes, Anchor, wherever you're listening to this episode. Just dropping a review in there would mean the world. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.